Hello everyone and welcome to another short extra getting stuff painted. A while back I did what I thought would be a one-off getting stuff painted extra where I just happened to have done a lot of scenery and that's very rare because as you'll know if you've watched this series I hate painting scenery but it's happened again where I've just had a bunch of scenery from different games and just miscellaneous things that I'm going to do another one because I'd rather talk about it in this small bite sized thing than have it clutter up a normal getting stuff painted where the miniatures are more so the main deal. So yeah, I've been painting a bunch of stuff. Um, contrast paint has technically been used in a couple of examples, but for the most part not. So that's kind of unique in that sense as well, since it's mostly spray paint with dry brushing. Uh, but we can talk about that individually and just as a little video extra. Uh, I can't remember what I covered in the other one, but that's besides the point. Let's get started. All right, I've moved the camera down a little bit. So first of all, we'll talk about this. This is from an ancient Warhammer 40k scenery set. It came with like a drop pod, a stasis tube, some other stuff. I've actually used some of it in videos before that I had painted up. I completely misplaced this. I found it while I was cleaning out some old cupboards and drawers. It had fallen down behind some stuff. I think it's meant to be like a communication thing. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to paint it because I've decided that this winter, winter 2024, I am declaring war on my pile of grey shame, be it scenery or miniatures, and I'm really getting stuck in and trying to get a lot painted because it's going to be a, a miserable cold winter. So I want to have something to focus on that <laughs> while you're stuck indoors. So I'm just trying to get as much painted as possible. Still trying to keep it to a reasonable standard, of course, but trying to get a lot painted this winter. So I'm also hoping it will encourage people to get through their pile of grey shame more than normal. Anyway, this I did use a bit of contrast on, but I sprayed it silver. I just used uh, Games Workshop's um, metallic silver. Uh, then I used Mantis Warrior Green for the screens, a little bit of their normal bronze paint, not a uh, contrast paint, just bronze, and then Aggressor Shade over the top to make it look rusty a little bit. That is from a different spray paint, I think, that kind of stained it there, but I was kind of okay with it looking a bit used. So I did that and then a little bit of rust on the back. I just used the bronze for the rust rather than the actual rust paint I have. It's just a little bit of scenery. I think it was originally in a starter box where it was Ultramarines versus Tyranids and it had like the guy carrying the gene seeds I think. And then they re-released the terrain just as a, a pack of, of cheap terrain because you don't get that much. So that's done. So I've technically finished that set after approximately two decades. That's good. These are also what I found while cleaning out. I thought I'd already painted up all my 3D printed barrels. Did some of them like radiation barrels from Fallout, did some of them just in various shades of red to look like petrol, you know, that kind of thing. But I found one more to also fell down the back of a cupboard. So I decided I'll just get it done. I spray painted it the red you can see. Then I did a dry brushing of Ultwin Grey and also a little bit of a dry brushing of um, the rust dry rust from army painter i did kind of miss a bit there with the spray but it kind of just looks worn you're not going to see if it's like that i've already got tons of these painted up it was a huge pack for super cheap that i got on etsy i think it's not a great 3d print it's really obvious filament lines but uh, they were purchased ages ago so it was just to get it done and now i'm i'm 90 percent sure that's all of these done finally so no more barrels in the near future so next we have this huge chunk here and if you watch the last Getting Stuff Painted I talked about the scenery that comes with um, Masters of the Universe Battlegrounds by Archon Studios. You actually get a ridiculous amount of scenery in the base box. This isn't all of it. There's two more sprues worth that I haven't done yet I think. But I figured this was enough that I've done so far to at least show you the method I decided to use for it. I ummed an add in the... I'll just kind of show you because they're all painted the same. Uh, while I'm blathering and then I'll tell you how I did it. I am an ad in the last getting stuff painted. Uh, like, do I want to do this form of Xenothol highlighting? Do I want to do like purple on turquoise? And I think tur uh, purple with turquoise as the shadowed uh, spray would look more cartoony and more in keeping with He-Man. I'd have to buy and well find, I don't even know if it exists, find and buy a purple spray to do that so I opted just to use what I had which was just Citadel's uh, Abaddon Black spray paint so did it all in black wait, waited until it dried then I used Army Painter Turquoise you angle it kind of that angle and further away you spray you turn it you spray etc and it creates this fantastic two-tone 
that is super quick. If you don't mind it not being super detailed, it is so quick to get scenery done. I did the same thing for the Warcry scenery that I've talked about in this series before, and it's nice and quick. I did a dry brushing of wind grey, I didn't apply it that well in some cases, to be honest it's a little thick, but again, sitting on a table like that, hopefully you wouldn't really notice that much. But the ultimate grey as a dry brush, just on the edges, yeah, applied it way too thick up there. If you want to bring it back down again and it's already dried, you can put some non oil in between the stones. So I'll probably do that up there actually. There's little like twigs to pick out on some of them, and some of these have more that I'll go over in a second. For those, I just reapplied um, um, grey sear on them from a pot of paint and then used wildwood. Oh no, uh, Garagax sewer actually for those. So there's a bunch of wall sections here again with the twigs done in that manner. They were super quick. One more wall back here. And this was like, this is just a wall. So that was the easiest to do by far, the sections that just look like that. Little pillars, I think there's like two more of these to do. Uh, I just used Bal Red to pick out the little flag there and then there's some twigs on the back there. This one I don't think has anything. Oh, twig on this side, super simple. Uh, these ones, they have little metal bits on some of them. Actually, I don't think this one does. No. These do, though. Got a little bit of wood there that I use rattling grime for. I picked out the metal stuff, like the manacles there, and the computer consoles here, or whatever they're meant to be. In Lead Belcher, again, I use Mantis Warrior. A little bit of bow red for the buttons, and put non oil over them, just so they kind of blended in more with the wall. And on this side, there's pipes and whatever that's for. <laughs> so again, it's new. If you take your time, you could definitely do each of these far better. But if you hate painting scenery like I do, and you want a quick method that looks okay, the Zenithal method is completely fine. Um, as I say, if you have if you have a purple spray paint, I, I don't know why you would, but if you did, I don't know, maybe collect Thousand Suns or something. Uh, not Thousand Suns, the Celestian ones. Well, either way. I think purple base with the turquoise angle down might look better, or at least more cartoony. But I'm happy with the turquoise on top of just pure black. I think that works for just looking like a dank dungeon. Now the official playboard it comes with is like sand tiles, but the walls are quite dark. If you wanted it to match the sand tiles, what would you have to do? Uh, a, a sand coloured spray on top of black would work. It would look like darkened sandstone. I feel like that would work. I wanted it to kind of look dank, so if I ever want to use this scenery for uh, Warcry or something, it kind of fits. Yeah, it's got hex bases, but it doesn't really matter if it's together. It's more so just for the walls that don't have the futuristic stuff on it, obviously. But just stuff that has like sword iconography. Oh yeah, that was just a uh, Nazra Yellow for, for the swords there. Like that just works, it's just line of sight blocking. There's a few bits that have like ladders and stuff, I haven't done those yet. So there's at least a couple of those, there's a couple more pillars, and then a few more wall segments. You get a ridiculous amount of scenery in that core box. But I'm through like three quarters of it, and I hope to get the rest done soon. I probably won't go out of my way to show that off, unless like super quick just to say it's done, because it's going to be done exactly the same as this. Uh, let's cover this real quick since I blathered about that for a while. These are hot off the press and might actually still be a little wet, but these are the two pathetically small statues you get with the Apocalypse box for Crisis Protocol that you've hopefully seen the unboxing of. They're smaller than a standard sized human character for the game. Like they're smaller than your bog standard Spider-Man or Captain America. I don't know why the statues are that small, though they're obviously dwarfed by Apocalypse, but he's pretty large. So these are just thrown in to try and charge more for his box, as I said during the unboxing. Or maybe to force you to try and like convince you to get the overpriced scenery sets that are themed around them. I don't know. But I just spray painted these grey sear and then I used Agaros Dunes to kind of create that. I'm going to do the same on Apocalypse's base as I did for these because I like the sandstone look. It kind of fits his Egyptian theme. The statues look neat, don't get me wrong. They should be larger. They should dwarf a normal figure so they actually look like a proper statue. These just look like somebody was having a joke and pretending that Apocalypse is super short, or was super short, maybe it was back in the ancient Egyptian days, I don't know. But it's pathetic that these are so small, and I mean, Apocalypse is large, but he's not that large. So it clearly is just like padding to try and justify what they charge for his box, and didn't quite fly with me, honestly. 
So I have to move the camera a tiny bit to talk about this last thing. If you remember a long, well, a little while ago now, I had a bunch of other 3D printed buildings of pretty decent quality. That's the dogs going through. Oh, in case you didn't hit the tripod, well done. For uh, Battletech Alpha Strike, I think I mentioned then there was one last building I had that I wasn't getting around to because it was so much larger than all the other ones. Well, hey, it's this one. Unfortunately, the colors don't quite match. One, because I kind of forgot how I did those other ones, but two, I wouldn't have done it anyway because once I remembered, I was like, oh yeah, that's why I didn't really want to do it. I, with the previous ones, I spray painted them gray sear and then used Basilicanum gray, which is how I got a kind of lighter gray color. In this case, I just immediately went to spraying with Militarum gray or whatever it's called, the standard Citadel just plain gray spray paint, which is a different tone, unfortunately. But if I'd wasted a whole pot of grey sear on this, I mean uh, Basilicanum grey, wouldn't have felt great about it. It would have been an absolute waste of a very expensive paint, because contrast paint is expensive, so uh, I didn't want to waste that, so I tried to make it match as much as I did, or, or could rather. I used Wildwood for the darkened parts on the roof, I dry brushed with a little bit of uh, the Elthwin grey. I deliberately did it while the brown was wet so I could take some of the brown colour and also just kind of stain it a little bit so it doesn't quite, you know, jar. And then I put a little bit of black paint in the windows to darken them on purpose so that it's a bit harder to, to tell it's just, you know, there's not really anything inside the building, it's, it's purely, like, decorative windows. But it didn't turn out as well as the other ones as a result of me having to save on paint by spray painting as a base coat or it doesn't match up either. But it does match up more to other buildings I've done way in the past for Battletech. And it's the right scale for mechs to be able to jump on this and you know use it for cover and stuff. It's a fantastic looking bit of scenery. Purchased from Etsy, I think, it was a while back now. But it's done, it's been sitting waiting for ages and it's finally done. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, might end up touching it up in the future just to improve it a little bit. But Again, this is by getting the pile of grey shame painted, and it's taken a big dent today. And that is going to do it for this Getting Stuff Painted little mini extra episode number two. Uh, I don't have any plans to do lots more scenery in the future, barring just the rest of the box for Mas uh, Masters of the Universe and Battlegrounds. I'm trying to get the name right rather than just saying the He-Man Game Bark on Studios, but I won't bother showing that off since it's just done the same way. So yeah, probably not going to be another extra focused on scenery in a while but last time I said that I, I think I said it's probably going to be the only one and I ended up doing this so who knows either way winter 2024 get your pile of grey shame painted or do a dent into it do a damage that's what I'm trying to do and I'm trying to encourage everyone else to do it as well either way enjoy the rest of your day and see you tomorrow probably for a proper upload until then ta -ta for now